Look at what I got for my birthday. I'm so excited to taste these that I think I'll probably taste them first and then do a little intro and tell you guys about them. This is the Hamden Estate 8 Marks Collection. I'm so, so, so excited. I'm sure you have seen the unboxing videos that show you. <laughs> All eight unaged Hamden Marks at 60% ABV. 200 milliliter bottles of each included, as well as infographics that tell you why each one of these is different from the other. Um, and the most interesting part is that they're all molasses based fermentations with the same type of distillation. The only thing that varies is the length of time of the fermentation and the use of dunder, muck, and cane vinegar in the fermentation. That's it. And it results in these high ester rums that have various amounts of esters in them and various types of esters too. Do we want to break this down now or do I want to taste them first? I would like to taste them first or at least start nosing them first. So let's dive in. I'm going to go in order from least funky to most funky. And that would mean that the first one I'll start with is OWH. So we'll first start with OWH, which stands for Outram Warmald Hussy, which I think I mispronounced the first two words in that. But OWH has 40 to 80 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. It's fermented using only molasses for three days, and then it is distilled using the double retort pot still to an ABV of around like 86%. I'll try to keep my, my notes, my tasting notes pretty short. So this to me is like lightly grassy. Everything's pretty light here. Lightly grassy with some green banana peels. There's a little bit of pineapple in here. But yeah, overall I'd say light fruitiness, mostly pineapple, a little bit of banana peel, and then some kind of mixed, just general fruit and some grassiness. Wow, okay. There's some juicy fruit gum in the finish. Mm, this is fun, okay. So there's a lot more fruits on the palate. None of that grassiness is coming forward, but there is a little bit of like an earthy roasted cinnamon thing in there, but it's a lot of juicy dried figs, a lot of juicy, juicy pineapple. It's really nice, light, but fruity. And I, I say light, because it's light relative to the other ones that we're going to taste. But for an unaged rum, there is a lot of complexity here already, just with the OWH, which is their most clean fermentation that they do at Hamden. LFCH is up next. This stands for Lawrence Francis Close Hussey. And it has between 80 to 120 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. And the way they get that difference between the OWH and the LFCH is by letting it ferment for one additional day. That's it. One more day, four days in total fermentation. It's still just molasses and water spontaneously fermented one more day, which is pretty cool. Very similar, but now the pineapple is starting to ferment a little bit in the fridge. It's, or, or it's been sitting out for too long outside. And a little less grassiness. 
but yeah, very similar. Okay. The palette is less fruity, less sweet fruits, and more, more like bitter fruits, more like fermented fruits. So that pineapple is no longer sweet. It's now like a fermented pineapple. There's more of that banana peel, green banana peel. There's a little bit of a like coconut sunscreen slash bug spray thing. So a little bit going a little bit more <clears throat> towards um, maybe a little bit more of like a chemical-y taste to it. A lot more grassiness now on the palette. But this did have an oilier mouthfeel than the OWH. Next up, Elrock stands for Light Rum Owen Kelly. This is 200 to 400 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. And the way they do this is now they're starting to add in the dunder, the muck, and the cane vinegar. So they add in low quantities of cane vinegar, dunder, and muck to the fermentation. Um, still, they're using molasses as their base for fermentation and this is allowed to ferment for a total of five days so it says that there is three days of alcoholic fermentation and then two days of essentially like a dead wash sitting there and there's no alcoholic fermentation going on but it's five days total now this is fermented fruit salad like the melon the honeydew melon is in there the pineapple's in there and this has been sitting out in the sun fermenting <laughs> And we're having this picnic outside of a nail salon. There's some tiki torches lit outside too. Definitely a lot more funk. Um, not to say that the LFCH and the OWH had funk per se, um, but this definitely now gets into the high ester funkiness where those aromas that I was getting on the nose are now presenting on the palate as well, right? We've got that fermented fruit salad outside of a nail salon. So there's a little bit of like a nail polish. It's more of like a nail salon thing though. It's not quite just nail polish, nail polish remover. It's like the whole experience. There's a little bit of like a minty thing in here too. Lovely. Just lovely. <laughs> Should we move on to the next one? HLCF, AKA Rumfire. So HLCF stands for Hamden Light Continental Flavored. This is 400 to 600 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Um, and yeah, this is the mark that Rumfire is made of. So this is at 60% instead of uh, Rumfire is normally at 62 and a half, 63, 62. Somewhere there. According to the infographic here, this one has a similar raw material breakdown to L Rock. This is just now allowed to ferment for an extra two days, so seven days total. But it uses a little bit of cane vinegar, dunder, and muck. And there's no like quantities of how much is used, it's just saying low amounts of cane vinegar, dunder, and muck, along with molasses. I feel like now we're going back to sweeter pineapples. And now the bananas are no longer banana peels, they're actually nice and ripe bananas. But we're still now sitting right outside the nail salon. So we're almost, almost in the nail salon. Where like you get whiffs of it every time the door opens, you know? There's a little creaminess on the nose too. Almost like a yogurty, yogurty thing. The pineapple has now been grilled. It's nice and roasty. There's some sweet, mushy banana. A little bit of that grassiness comes back in too. A like nutmeg and clove finish. Mm. 
So this has a little bit more spice to it, a little bit more like an earthy characteristic to it, and a touch of a dry finish. <sighs> okay, we're halfway. All right, so now we're gonna crank up the funkiness with Diamond H, which stands for Diamond H. <laughs> So now instead of using low quantities of cane vinegar, dunder, and muck, we're now using medium quantities of cane vinegar, dunder, and muck in addition to the molasses. This is also allowed to ferment for a total of 10 days. We've stepped into the nail salon. We are in the nail salon. We're in a seat getting a, a pedicure. There's a little bit of a fermented pear quality now with hints of pineapple, but I don't know if it's just because I'm looking for that pineapple. There's a vanilla in there too. This one has a lot more of that fermented pineapple, a little bit of that like nail polish, nail salon thing. A lot of those spices again, that's really nice. A little bit of that earthiness, but yeah. A lot more spices. Also the pineapple fronds are, are tossed in there as well. The spices are again, a lot of clove, a lot of allspice too. Mm -hmm. This one has a nice oily mouthfeel. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, HGML, this stands for Hamden George McFarquhar Lawson. The ester concentration here is 1,000 to 1,100 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. This seems to be made with similar quantities of cane vinegar, dunder, and muck as Diamond H. This is now just allowed to ferment for a little bit longer, a total of 15 days. So five more days as compared to Diamond H. Mmm. We're still in the nail salon, but there's a lot more fruits. A lot more of that pear and the banana has come back. Do they do like a banana creamsicle? Maybe a banana Laffy Taffy? Something like that. It's like it's like a creamsicle made with bananas. So there's a little bit of this like sweet, creamy thing and the banana, yeah, instead of, instead of orange. Yeah, like, you're in the nail salon eating a banana flavored ice cream. And there's some pineapple too, maybe some pineapple chunks in it. Yeah, this has more of that overripe banana on the palate. Hmm. There's still the fermented pineapple, but it's really, really far in the back. It's a lot of this fermented banana um, or overripe banana. A little less spices. I'd say the spices are more so just like gentle wisps of clove and maybe some star anise. We're still getting a little bit of that nail salon thing on the palette. This one had a little bit, just like a touch more heat, I felt, um, but it was a nice oily creamy mouthfeel. We're now gonna crank things up a bit with C Diamond H, which stands for C Diamond H. <laughs> uh, the ester count here is 13 to 1400 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. And this is where the amount of cane vinegar and dunder and muck get cranked up now to high quantities. It's also allowed to ferment for an additional five days, so 20 days in total, almost three weeks. Okay. Okay, so we're, <laughs> it's a very active nail salon, really big nail salon. A lot of that is coming forward. There's overripe banana, there's actual creamsicle, so a little bit of that orange is coming through as well. There's a vanilla scented candle and a pineapple, an overripe pineapple. Mm. So less heat than the HGML, 
a really, really silky mouthfeel. Really nice. There's some fun grassiness coming forward. Like it's a lot of those pineapple fronds as well as, are they called pineapple fronds? As well as green banana peel and just like a kind of general like crab grass, like a little bit sweet, but very grassy. Nail salon coming forward. Uh, a lot of that overripe pineapple. Not too, too much spiciness. That's nice. I like that one. I mean, I like them all, but yeah. Okay. Whew. My palate is <laughs> very fatigued. Is it smart to taste all eight in one sitting? Yes. No. With just water as your palate cleanser? No, no. I will taste these many more times. I'd like to go backwards, right? Or taste some of the higher ester ones as compared to the lower ester ones, like side by side. Right now we're just plowing through. We're just going for overall flavors and aromas. Last but most certainly not least, DOK which stands for Dermot Owen Kelly Lawson. This is 1,500 to 1,600 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. I have tasted DOK before, an aged DOK. You can click this link if you wanna watch that after this. But yeah, DOK is the like legal limit <laughs> of esters that you're allowed to, that you're allowed to produce. All right, this seems to have a similar, again, a similar breakdown as far as the amounts of molasses, cane vinegar, dunder, and muck that's added into the fermentation as the C Diamond H. However, it's allowed to ferment for an additional five days, so 25 days in total. Just like C Diamond H, but like dial it up more. <laughs> so. Yeah, very, very active nail salon. There's that creamsicle thing, the pineapple, the banana. Now we have the tiki torches that are lit in the nail salon. Ooh, vanilla. There's a lot of vanilla in here. A nice waxiness too, like a, yeah, vanilla scented candle. I already said that for Sea Diamond Age. Ugh, good overripe banana. A lot, a lot, a lot of fruits. A lot of pineapple that's fermented. It's tingling your tongue. Over at banana, green plantain, a little like key lime zest. Maybe it's key lime pie. There's a little custardiness in here too. Let me read to you what it says under DOK. DOK is the highest ester rum of Hamden Estate and all of Jamaica. A legendary mark, DOK reaches the maximum legal limit of high ester rum. Tasting DOK neat is an extreme but very formative experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say so. I need to eat some food and then I'm gonna come back and tell you more about, more about exactly what's on this infographic. All right, so I took a quick food break and now I'm back to talk more <laughs> about the Hamden Estate Eight Marks collection and exactly what's in it. Um, so I asked for this for my birthday and I was so excited to get it that I was like unable to describe what exactly it was coherently without just jumping all around uh, so I'm gonna try to very eloquently describe what exactly is in this box to you guys. And uh, you probably already know what's in it because you've probably watched other people's videos where they taste through all eight of these or they at least break down what's inside this box here. But Hamden Estates is a rum distillery in Jamaica. It's my favorite rum distillery in Jamaica. And they use very traditional techniques for producing rum. That involves spontaneous fermentations and the use of various different types of 
distillery byproducts in their fermentation. This leads to a funkier, fruitier tasting rum that's all developed naturally, right? These, these fruity and floral flavors are developed naturally from the yeast that's fermenting the molasses that they use for all of their rums. So for all eight of their marks, they are using molasses and they vary the amount of fermentation time and the amount of these byproducts that they add into their fermentation in order to get eight very different rums that are produced. And the reason that they're making all these different marks is because historically, these rums from Jamaica and still are and were sold in bulk and they're sold to blenders most often actually at least 50% of what Hamden sells as bulk goes to the confectionery industry but they're sold to blenders so that they can blend together these different rums that have different flavors and create a unique rum of their own and that kind of allows them to have endless possibilities of flavor profiles of rums if they're blending all these different types of rums. Anyways, so the byproducts that they're adding into the fermentation, you have probably heard me talk about a lot before, they're using dunder and muck, which are two different things. And they're also using cane vinegar or cane juice vinegar, which is made from sugarcane juice and it's allowed to naturally ferment and it produces a lot of vinegar so acetic acid rather than being more of an ethanol driven fermentation and i think that's because of the amount of time they let it sit it promotes a acetic acid fermentation after the ethanol fermentation anyways all these things are added in to provide natural yeast and bacteria into the fermentation to provide nutrients for the fermentation to bring back some other uh, heavy compounds that are left over from distillation and are left over from fermentation and the solids that are in the stills all of this stresses out the yeast, all of this provides competition for the yeast, all of this results in the formation of these chemical compounds, these fruity and floral chemical compounds called esters. Among like a whole bunch of other flavor and aroma compounds, but the big thing that we're focusing on here is esters. Now I have a very in-depth video on how bacteria and yeast and the various conditions that are present in a fermentation media can impact ester production. If you want to go check out that video, it's right here. But ultimately, the more of the cane vinegar and the dunder and the muck that's added into the fermentation and the longer the fermentation sits, the more esters you're going to get. So the more funkiness this rum is going to become. So each mark has different levels of funkiness. They have different levels of esters that are being produced. And the only thing that Hamden is changing between all eight of these marks is what's done in the fermentation. So the raw materials that you, that's used in the fermentation and the duration of that fermentation. They distill each and every one of these the same, using the same type of pot still and to the same ABV, around 86% ABV. So one thing that I thoroughly enjoy on this infographic is the breakdown of the esters in each of these samples. So for OWH, for example, it shows that there's between 40 and 80 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Now, most of what those esters are, and this is the case for all eight marks, most of those esters are ethyl acetate. This is a very volatile ester that can be, you know, fruity and ethereal and can also just remind you of nail polish remover. And that's because 
you find it in nail polish remover. And ethyl acetate makes up most of the esters in each one of these rums. Like I'm talking anywhere between 91.5% all the way up to 98.3 weight percent of these esters are all ethyl acetate. So for OWH, you can see that there is ethyl acetate, mostly 97.9% of the esters are ethyl acetate, and that other 2.1% are made up of ethyl butyrate, isoamyl acetate, uh, ethyl caproate, which is also known as ethyl hexanoate, and ethyl lactate. So each of these esters does have its own flavor profile that's associated with it, but I'm gonna try to simplify that a little bit. Ethyl butanoate or ethyl butyrate is known for having like a pineapple aroma and taste. Isoamyl acetate is known for being like pear or banana. Ethyl hexanoate or ethyl caproate is known for being like fruity, apple-y, more like apple peel. And ethyl lactate is known for, again, being fruity, buttery, more like butterscotch. It can also be coconutty and tart. And like I said, OWH is made by just allowing molasses and water to naturally ferment for three days. LFCH similarly is fermented, wild fermented using molasses and water, but it's allowed to ferment for four days, an additional day. And you can see that there are more esters of a higher variety of esters found in LFCH. So that additional day allows for a little bit more variety. There's a little bit higher of an ester concentration here between 80 and 120 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. And there's also a higher variety of those esters as compared to OWH. So it has around the same amount of ethyl acetate making up these esters. And the other 2.8% is ethyl butyrate, isoamyl acetate, ethyl caproate or hexanoate, ethyl lactate, ethyl caprylate, which is also known as ethyl octanoate, and ethyl caprate, which is also known as ethyl decanoate. So we're getting a couple more esters introduced here. So we have ethyl octanoate, which is known for being like fruity, whiny, waxy. They can have notes of apricot, banana, pear, and remind you of brandy. Ethyl decanoate, on the other hand, is more like waxy. Both OWH and LFCH were recently added by the Hussey family who owns Hamden Estates in 2010. And I think they're a nice addition to the marks that they have, right? They're nice, they're light, they're really enjoyable as is. So I'm not gonna break down the chemical composition of every single mark here, but I will point out some interesting things to note. Um, let's talk about HLCF for a second. So for example, the amount of esters that's in HLCF is 400 to 600 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. This is about 0.4 weight percent of that rum is made up of esters. Of that 0.4%, 98.3% is ethyl acetate. The other 1.7% are these other six esters that I have listed, right? Ethyl butyrate, isoamyl acetate, ethyl hexanoate, ethyl lactate, ethyl octanoate, ethyl decanoate. So if I did my math correctly, that means it's 8.5 grams of those esters out of the 500 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Such a tiny, tiny little amount. It's amazing that such a tiny, tiny little amount of these other esters can have such a great impact on the flavor profile of these rums. I think that's really cool. So what I think is interesting about the ester composition of these rums is that once you get to diamond H, the complexity of these other esters decreases. So a majority of the esters, like I said, are ethyl acetate. 
So for diamond H, the other esters that are not ethyl acetate are ethyl butyrate and ethyl caproate or hexanoate. That's it, just those two other esters. DOK also only has ethyl butyrate and ethyl caproate as the other esters that were measured. For HGML and C diamond H, they have uh, ethyl butyrate, ethyl caproate, and ethyl lactate. Only three other esters besides ethyl acetate. I think this is really interesting that the addition of more cane vinegar, more dunder, more muck, as that increases, it doesn't necessarily increase the amount of complexity of the rums. It just increases the amount of total esters that are produced. Now, I will note, as someone who has done chemical analysis on distilled spirits like rums, before there are probably a whole bunch of other esters that are detected, but it's possible that they are in such small quantities that they're below our detection threshold or they're just kind of deemed insignificant as compared to the quantities of these other esters, which again are super, super, super tiny. Something that I found very interesting as someone who wants to make super funky rums and would be so ecstatic if I could produce a rum that had the funkiness of Hampton Estates, do that right at home, or I mean not at home, in my lab. The yield of their fermentation is extremely low, which I'm not surprised by. I'm not surprised by this. I get a pretty decent yield in my rum fermentations because I am pitching a distiller's yeast. I'm pitching Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Even though I'm adding in my live dunder, which has some microbes in it, I'm also pitching in the distiller's yeast because I do want that alcohol concentration, right? I want that alcohol fermentation because for me doing super small batches and getting a really small yield is not necessarily deemed worthy of my time. Now the ABV of the washes that they're getting is 5% and below. So for all of their washes, 5% and below. So even for OWH and LFCH, the rums that they're not adding any cane vinegar, dunder, or muck to, they're just allowing the molasses to wild ferment, it's still, they're just getting 5% ABV yield, which is, you know, fine. That's fine. That's like a low, low-ish ABV uh, whiskey wash, right? But as soon as they start adding in the cane vinegar, the dunder, and the muck, and allowing that to spontaneously ferment, they get between 2 and 4% ABV for their wash. My guess is that it kind of depends on the time of year and what the other conditions are like in the distillery. But I would think that as the amount of dunder, muck, and cane vinegar increases, that ABV drastically decreases and is closer to 2% for when they produce DOK, which is so low. It is so low. So for those home distillers out there wanting to make high ester rums similar to Hamden Estates, yeah, keep that in mind that their fermentations are very, very low yielding. So yeah, a lot of work for very little rum, but is it worth it? I don't know. Hamden's, Hamden does make a really, really amazing rum. So I, yeah, I am so, so, so happy that I got this for my birthday. This feels like it was made for me and made for like, yeah, any rum nerd out there that loves to be able to do the side-by-side -side tasting. I hear that they are going to come out with an eight marks series again, all one year old. So 
with a little bit of, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, to taste them side by side when there's a little bit of age on them on each of these. But anyways, all right, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment, like, subscribe. Did I already say like? And if you wanna support the channel even further, you can join us over on Patreon. I showed my Patreons that I got this on my exact birthday. Um, so they were able to see a picture of this infographic and, and everything like that. And if you would like to join us over there, I've got a link in the description below, but I do want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. I really, really, really appreciate you. And with that, happy holidays to everyone.